You are listening to 91.3 FM CJTR. This is Kathy, the host of Get Chatty with Kathy. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to connect with conversations in our community. Today we have Candace Blocky on. Microphone. Use the microphone. Today we have Candace on and she is going to be sharing with us about herself and what's going on here in the Queen City. Beauty, love being here. <laughs> yeah, we got 30 minutes. I'm really excited because Candace has actually been in my life since I was in elementary school, actually. We grew up in Regina together. We've gone through our lives together and I can think of you from as a child, going through your career. I remember how many times you've cut my hair and so many memories of us going out. I'm very good friends with Cand Candace's cousin and she's always been an inspiration to me, honestly. And I'm so grateful that you're here to just talk about yourself and what you're doing because you're always doing incredible things for this community. And these are the type of people that I'm just so happy to celebrate. Thanks, babe. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah. history brings up the feels. You're right. Mm -hmm. She gave me goosebumps already a couple times, so I'm really excited about this conversation. So why don't we just talk about, let's pick a topic. Let's go 20 years ago. Candace, what were you doing 20 years ago? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so 20 years ago, I actually would have been already in the beauty business. I was already working behind the chair. I had bought my first home. Holy uh, moly. Yeah, you weren't so. wasting any time. You yeah. were young doing that, I remember. Yeah, 18. I couldn't even have a pint of beer after work. <laughs> but you could own a home. Yep. Responsible. Yeah. So did you always grow up with that sense of responsibility? Like, where did that come from? Yeah, I would say if my roots, like I'm a true fiery Leo. Uh, you know, I get something in my mind and I wanted to create it. I believed I could. And uh, I also had a family that really deeply instilled the roots in me that I can. And they equipped me with personal growth books that just made me understand life to a different level and see those leadership qualities and skills in myself. Well, you had great role models. I remember seeing you working behind the scenes on projects and then growing to be the leader of those projects that you were doing with your family. It's been interesting to see the dynamic of you guys in the industry of, you know, like hairdressing, but not just that, it's been a lot of different businesses, so. Yeah, and family roots, you know, I grew up with all four of my grandparents. Yes. And I do believe like that humbleness or um, how you treat others, how you invite people to the table, it comes from what you watch and what you see. Definitely, I think that those are the influential roots of our foundation. Speaking of that, yes. let's talk about foundations because I'll give you guys a little background about myself. A year ago, I was kind of struggling with what I wanted to do, what my priorities were with my home business. And Candace and I were talking one day on the phone. It was kind of, is the word serendipitous? I think I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> any case so Candace was talking about how she was starting this new project and there was this pilot group going on and I was talking about some of the stuff that was going on in my life and how I was just trying to figure out what my priorities were now that I was working from home and I was juggling all these things and I didn't know what to do and I remember you just said come and do this come and do this I'm like oh this is so cool but I can't afford it Candace it's like wait like I don't have an income anymore life's changed so much and then you made this opportunity work for me. You were like, write about it, tell people what your experience is. You never censored a word I said. And you let me sit in that room with your colleagues who I think are, can be the hardest people to pilot something on because you know them, you know? And you did it and you were like, you brought to the table every day like an energy that like inspired a room full of people. So why don't you tell us about this amazing, like honestly, life fundamentally, like it changed the way you think about the fundamentals of your day-to-day -day life and where they came from. So while we're talking about our parents and working hard when we're 18 years old to start that business by that house, it already started in you with your foundation, right? From a young age. And now you're teaching us this stuff. Yeah. I Full think, circle. Yeah, you know, life's lessons come from our disruptions. And when we have a strong foundation, uh, the, it puts us in a place of being aware of how we respond. 
And when we create that awareness to the disruption and the things that don't feel good, we can lean into it and learn from them a lot faster. It doesn't have to be a lifelong lesson. I love how you were saying we can embrace even different personalities when we face yes. those disruptions. And one of my favorite ones was, what was it? It was superhero. I thought of myself yeah. as like, like a powerful superwoman. And like the next time something comes up, I can put that on and I'll be like superwoman Kathy. But then I can also step back and be like, that's that role. And it's not bad. It's just what it served its purpose for. And I don't have to be it. I don't have to every day. Yeah, I love the alter ego stories and exploring yes. all of you and loving all of you because we are never in one energy all the time where we're, but often we think that we should be this balance. We should be this perfection. We hold ourselves like if we got angry, we failed ourselves that day. If we were too shy to ask that person to connect, we were, were hard on ourselves that day. So when we embrace all of ourselves and give ourselves grace, allow ourselves to learn from a triggered energy we can slow down the process of how we respond when we feel triggered we become, become aware then we interrupt that pattern and then we get to choose how we want to respond when we're scared we can put our leadership our brave courageous hat on i call my girl raven and, and i can become her and do the hard scary thing um, if i need to listen I have someone moving through something hard and I want to fix it. That's a lot of our nature will respond by saying, how can I fix or help? What can I do? Whereas when I go into Charlize, my feminine nurturing energy, I'm here to listen and hold space. I don't have to be waving. I don't have to be reactive about what happened to or from. It's about holding that gentle nurturing calm space and we do have to wear so many hats especially being a mom taking care of our kids there's so many things with work like I can only imagine how many hats you have to wear so looking at those moments and when you do have to be raven not looking at it as a bad thing but just a powerful being inside you and you can then turn into the next situation I think that leaves us feeling a lot more less judgmental in ourself and yeah. at ease with our own self yeah, when you're being courageous, I had a great question the other day. Someone's like, you know, a student actually, what has been the hardest thing uh, for you? And, you know, I think believing in yourself and it's not about me, it's about your message and finding that perfect purpose in you and being brave enough to show it and feel seen, um, ask to be seen, show up at the table. That is probably the hardest Incredibly hard. Is, first of all, identifying what that purpose is and then having the courage to go after it. Yes. As one who started a new business in the last yeah. couple of years and changing my direction, yeah. it was so incredibly hard because of all of those things that we think about money, we think about you know being able to support our family, we think about being a failure, we think about you know the negatives, but then I'm trying to think about, holy moly, now I got freedom, now I got... Um, my own time to decide what I want to do and the luxury of choice. And if you change your perspective about it, it just see, it just is a totally different story. I love all of that because when we are dimming, right, we we're feeling inferior to be too shiny. Oh, well, I'm too much or too shiny. Or if we are comparing, I'm not them, you know, I'm not doing it like them or they're better then we are not going to really follow through. So instead of saying, don't be those things, because natural, there's nature always yeah. in all of us. We're gonna compare, we're gonna dim, we're gonna get fear. So don't not do those, but when those things do come up, because they will, then you just have to be curious why. And start asking yourself questions, be your own counselor, and know that your wisdom inside of you, when you still and strengthen that foundation to calm and listen, to your own wise characters, then you get the answer. And maybe it isn't the right time, and that's okay. Or maybe, you know, just check your ego, go forward and have the hard conversation. But that's like the awareness of your curiosity and why you're feeling certain ways instead of running away from it is so much, there's so much power.
awareness is that key word there. And yeah. I think as you get older, that awareness comes through experience. My goodness, now I know if somebody's doing something, I gotta not get my raven on. I gotta like yeah. <laughs> retreat, retreat. Uh, yeah. Anyways, you know this thought, uh, this reminded me of a story. I don't know if you remember this a little while ago. I gave you a show. You had done like a little like reel on your social media, and you were just saying like you need to believe in what you're doing, or something to that regard. And you're like, if you visualize and like put that energy out there, it will happen. And you were talking about it, and so I actually called you because that course and that talk that we had beforehand actually worked and I was telling you about how I had imaged imagined something and then the very next day it happened and it was all because of that positive affirmation that I had been working on and visualizing and building it to make it happen and not just sitting there waiting for it yeah see it be it do it yeah I mean if you if you can see it you will become it so just it's really faith faith based belief in self that totally strengthen leaning into yourself is so hard this year of yes but like it's opened up a billion doors so yeah. I, you know like if, if if I'm the worst I have to lean on it's pretty good I'm yeah. doing good I love that because you said year of yes so last year 2022 was my hell yes year hell I yes have a, I love it I choose a theme every single year since 2018 really my life planner evolved that's when I started choosing a theme for the year and hell yes was very valuable for a whole year focused on it. If it wasn't a hell yes, it was a hell no. Um, and it made me think deeper on my decision and what was making me feel good. And if it wasn't a hell yes, then I just would say, you know what? Not good enough. It's not enough for me right now. Good girl. Yeah. So what kind of things changed because of that? I My decision making, my choices in who I spend my time with, my choices in how often I say yes. So I, I want to be a part of everything. I bet you do. And you have your hands and so many, yeah. your, your access to so many things is there. Yeah. So selection and then also led me into the space that where this year is the year of freedom. So freedom to me is in my mind. At first, I always felt when I get more time, and there was this like suffocating restriction to freedom. Uh, where now I've been focusing on mindset, I study every morning, I really go into my place of peace a lot faster, a lot easier. It's a practice for me, it isn't my nature, uh, which is why it's a challenge and yeah. why life is here grow. for us. Yeah, one of the things about your My Life Planner that I really enjoyed, and I have myself actually went in, I I'm not really like a journaler. Yeah. So what I liked about the My Life Planner is it's more of a practical tool that allows you to think big picture and actually also be intimate into your week. So I like that. So for instance, I and I still do it. I should have brought it because here I am. It's May whatever. It's been almost, you know, like six months of me every week uh, on Monday sitting through my calendar looking at all of the days. I still put a surprise in once a week for somebody to do something and it's more intentional every week now I really have my three goals and I also make sure to write down like what I want to like bring into the world and that's all from your book and it's changed the way my week is like it really is yeah and I love that thank you for sharing because it should feel simple it's not as complex as people think nope. building the habit is the complexity following through is the complexity holding yourself accountable and those habits are life-changing truly are, i find time hard. for stuff now and yeah. it's like you when you we say we're too busy we need to find time yeah. to relax it's like now i'm more intentional it's like oh i see i'm going out three nights in a row because yeah. i said yes to all these things i better make some time for myself and my family yeah. and i can see it ahead of time so it's not so reactionary and we can build space for that time together that's more like don't get me wrong, I'm not going to like make some creative, imaginary, fabulous night for my family or something extreme, mm -hmm. but at least I can be like, hey guys, let's like have Taco Tuesday and watch a movie together so that I'm intentional to my family, which was one of my goals yeah. for like life is just spend more time with them. So Yeah, and the B word, we talked about it. Like I don't use the B word. I'm projected on often because people observe and look at my life and they see you must be so busy. And, and really, I'm, I choose a very intentional life and I'm very fulfilled. 
I've done habits for so many years. You know, my background is a beauty business, right? I started mm -hmm. at 18 out of high school. But my biggest educational investment has been in personal and professional growth. Yes, so and like, you've done like really cool ones, haven't you? Oh, like, yes. I remember you going down to California for really cool, and you'd walk on coals, and yeah. like the energy you would come back with was like it came into all of us. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing is you go and you get motivated. Yes, and then you come back to everyone else; it's still the same. So I think my greatest. Oh, I see what you're saying. So that you yeah. have this high level of like yeah. intensity from this experience, and we're in Regina. So what yeah. did you do with that? Well, my greatest success has been committing and following through. And so I go to these things on my own. Mm -hmm. I don't have a dependency on others having to help me with these commitments. Which is huge. Some people can't go for dinner on their own. Everybody, I recommend going to a restaurant and eating by yourself. It's yeah. very empowering. It's it opens up the world. It's when you find purpose and, and joy and love in what you do. Is be, you get that connection that you're so eager that it would almost be a distraction for someone else to be there right so, so you're focusing on yourself yeah. in these events you're there to learn about yourself and your business I'm assuming yeah okay and like just massive action and follow through through that passion when you get back so those habits are daily weekly monthly I know annual plan with ease and slow Beautiful. Um, it's issues. like taking almost like a scheduled approach to your life slightly. I'm sorry to like say that, but like I need that almost yeah. nothing else. I forget and I get lost in the day to day of it all. Yeah, it's very intentional. And so, you know, beauty business background, professional gross investment and in education. I've moved into nonprofit organizations with Fashion Week. I now have a beauty school that's a private vocational school. So a lot of regulations, a way Beautiful different school. journey. Thank Stunning. you very much. You're raising the standards of how people view our career choice. And now my commitment has become Life School. So it's only launched in the last month. And Life School is something where I get to share community connections. I've done team events and workshops. I've been able to do healing growth journeys through those who have moved through trauma. Uh, my trauma myself was over 17 years ago experiencing domestic violence. And uh, it's a very vulnerable thing to move through and no story is the same, mm -hmm. but we all have one. Mm -hmm. So the quicker we can connect with each other on a vulnerable place. A um, real place, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, there's Without no, the mask. Yeah, and there's no comparing whose story is harder. Or worse. <laughs> like, you know, it's really just us, which I think success, too. It's If you haven't defined your success story or what you feel success is, how do you know when you're there? Because um, my success moments, definition yeah. wouldn't be yours. And so, you know, if someone's watching and projecting onto you, it's because they may not know their own self, what makes them happy or joyful or what helped them heal. They haven't found that thing yet. What worked for me might not work for you, but I'm here to hold space and, and support you with the tools I found. Definitely. And I was going to actually say you, you su provide a support of many tools not just one. And I know yeah. through, you know, going through my own stuff in my own life, it's like some tools work better than others, 100%. And yeah. it is an interesting space to be, especially with colleagues. But I feel like sometimes your colleagues are your family. Like you yeah. spend more time with them. Totally. So they know when you've had yeah. a shitty day at home, when you come into the office. Yeah. So why not like build with them? And so I feel like some of your spaces are work related with when, um, you're talking to people about these sort of things. It's definitely with a colleague based thought process, especially when I was with you, we had all of your team there mm -hmm. sharing their experiences and it was so powerful. I think the biggest thing to remember is we are not defined by our career. So life school is really about the importance of the life skills we learn along the way, personal and professional. They like meld together. It's yeah. not one or the other. Yeah. And just finding that joy in life, how, how gift life is a gift. And Definitely. when I think of my life planner, it's a tool that may not resonate with everyone, but for me, it's a tool I get to share. Our life school is a topic in the conversation. One thing we all have in common, diversity, age, sex, none of it really matters. We all have life. Experiences. We, we can't mm -hmm. argue that. Yeah. We all get this gift of life. So life school is about those skills. I have a passion for youth. I've always done summer camps and events, so I get that time. Yeah, they and are her kids features. are seriously adorable. I love yes. your kids, they're truly gems. So like you're, you're taking them and you're teaching them well. 
Thank you. They're part of the, the birthday party. They help uh, establish. <laughs> they're little the entrepreneurs. Party. Yeah, they're having fun with it. Good. Sure. Good. It should yeah. always be a family experience, I think, and yeah. grow together. Yes. So, if I wanted to do this course, how do we get involved? Well, Life School has all sorts of opportunities. So, uh, lifeschoolacademy.ca. That is where your foundation of connection is. Are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? I kind of explore who you are and then identify programs that work best for you, whether it's virtual, in oh, person. So um, you have various options yeah. for this. Customize your own event is most of what we have at this point because of time. I'm one person and we're <laughs> building our team. So yes, I believe that personalized, customized events helps me identify the topics we want to go through. Definitely. And I think facilitation is now what my mastery is. So it's not about my story. It's not about who's in the front of the room. It's about the conversation happening in the room. And you do do that quite well. When you come into the room, you do bring in energy. It is authentic, the conversation. And you make people get involved. You're not, like, you do not let anybody sit there quietly. Like, you get us standing up and doing cartwheels. Like, it's a yeah. dynamic conversation when we're in that room. So is, what's your goal then? Uh, like, is it to grow it bigger? Is it to just offer more programming? What, what's your thoughts? I believe intimate connections are the most powerful, so I'm not looking to be in front of a thousand people. Life school is a sacred, safe space for intimate connection. So we don't need 60 people there. We need an intimate group of 10 to 20. And have real and, conversations. Yeah, have that real, real talk in a safe space. And so when I was being called out to events and workshops, or uh, we also have grant funding available for teens, I would go into their spaces and it wasn't the same event that I could offer because of the space. So now having my own space, inviting people in, I have a guaranteed safe experience. Um, you create and, that energy yeah. there. Yeah. And, and it is beautiful. A ceremony uh, that really just cleanse that space to be very intentional. Sorry, I didn't catch what you said. You just had a... A smudge ceremony. Did you? Yes. So why don't you explain that experience? And oh. I mean, first of all, Sundance is a good friend of mine. I've been moving through um, uh, sound healing with him and Karen, his partner. Oh, wow. Uh, it was beautiful. So throughout COVID, that's kind of something I learned. Sound healing was beautiful. Is that um, like a sound bath kind of yeah, experience? Yeah. Okay, So cool. he does the gongs and it's got the masculine wow, energy. It's powerful. And then she does the bowls. So it's like the feminine energy, which I have a harder time connecting to. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> uh, but now it's in practice, and I really enjoy and have learned that space a lot easier. And uh, but the smudge ceremony was sacred, special to me. He gifted me a raven feather, and um, the beautiful thing is, I didn't know that, that my your raven power, name. my power speaker, like when who I show up in that space as, is raven, and so it's a very special uh, gift from from him that's now in my space and uh, you know people feel it and always acknowledge it when they walk in so it's right beside the style academy it's an easy place to host and experience uh, something day to day but it's a part of all of me now it's not identified by a planner it's not identified by the beauty business it's identified by all the passions and the commitments I've you know worked through in the last 22 years including healing from my trauma including doing the hard work uh, you know, in the last four years, I moved through a divorce and you know, I'm sharing that to lead by example of what would be uncomfortable because rocking solo is not an easy thing to do. But you're living your authentic life though. You yeah, find it right. They just, there wasn't, <laughs> I didn't have a lot of people out there doing what I was moving through. So once again, you get really isolated yeah. and alone. And COVID couldn't have helped. No, it was kind of through, but it did give me space to be, uh, you know, private in what I was going through. And I, I needed that, you know? Uh, so I feel like I'm speaking out from a strong place of certainty and where I've came from and who I'm becoming. Well, and I remember that wasn't an easy thing to do for you. I remember the struggle that you guys went through to try, but in the end, it's like the goal is to just live an authentic, happy life. So yeah, what's I'm happy to do like, that now. Go, I ended up running a solo event for, for single people because I really feel like single, when you get that identity, they they make it like it's all about dating. Oh, and for okay. me, it was about just an exploration to, to myself. Yes. 
right? So it wasn't about dating. It was like, who can I be around that's also going through the same experience and learning from each other? Totally. And the diversity of the audience too was really important to me. But then I also experienced like this weekend, I went out with six other couples and I'm on my own. I'm fully content that way. And it was cool to say like, you know what? We don't need to be worried about if we're single, if we're a couple, if we're what it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what it matter? Is. Because it's about doing life together. So uh, Life Schools Connect and Reflect is a monthly community event that just helps people come as they are. Wonderful. And, and anybody can come to this or is it like business yeah, professionals? It is or? adult, so 18 up. Okay. I have youth events separate, but uh, 18 up, connect and reflect. I facilitate good conversation. And this isn't one of your solo events because no. I was told I wasn't allowed to attend the solo Yeah, events. exactly. Which is <laughs> another thing. Was yeah, like, I get it. I kept shifting, but this is why I believe when you follow purpose, you get curious. You ask yourself questions why, and at the end of it, it's like, oh, no, you know what? It's not about um, because too many people conflicted it with dating, and my sole purpose for solo was not about dating. Just creating it was about connection. Mm -hmm. And so now with life school, it's way more neutral in regards to come as you are. It's the process that you yeah. were going through. Yeah, and, and what I, you needed at I the need time. I need to learn it. I need to learn it. Mm -hmm. And when you think about who taught you the most, like my primary mentors are. You know, it's not in relation to an age. It's in relation to life experiences and what we can share with each other. 100%. And those the older you get, conversations. those conversations with, it doesn't matter the age, and you can still yeah. connect, and it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Candice, you just bring such a light when you're around you. And, like, today I'm sitting here looking at you, the windows behind you, with the sun shining through. The air in Regina smells like, I don't know what I've to say. I've cleared my throat a few times, yes. <laughs> it's turning into a hot summer already what is going to be july and august for you and where do you see yourself in the next little while i'm excited uh i am a cabin girl oh. so i live at the cabin in the lake at the lake with my family we have a family cabin uh treasured from grandparents leaving it for us and it's all the cousins i think there's eight of them under oh ten my goodness. uh when we gather being on the lake, being with family. Is um, that your ha happy space? That's my happy place, yeah. Where you recharge? Yeah. So tell me, owning your own business, does it make it really easy to like have that flexibility or does it make it hard to like get yourself onto the lake? I would say it's day to day. Okay. I don't think that being an entrepreneur is ever um, expected. You just flow. Yeah, you have to go with the punches and roll with the day. Because if you were to, again, it goes back to awareness in your, how you respond. So if I don't have expectations that things are going to be a certain way, I'm going to, I'm going to respond it with a, with a good, good attitude, present space. Like be like, oh, well, that wasn't quite as expected. Or, or just saying, hey, let's conquer this quick, or let's um, have, what do you think? Let's get some feedback. Uh, yeah, having fun with it. Play every day. It's always like my, my. Connection. Mantra. Yeah. I think that's important too. It keeps you young and some of the funnest people I know have that attitude and I never look at their age. It's yeah. just, and they could be way older than me and I'm like, I want to be like that because I don't think uh, age is really like an attitude or, I mean, age is a number. It's not an added or I'm saying it wrong. I don't know what you're <laughs> but I know when you ask me about summer and I think about you know, where I'm gonna take it. It's for me, it's play every day, but my purpose is creating memorable experiences. So work or home, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. And it, it makes things feel more simple when you're grounded in, you know, that purpose, what feels good. I can do it with my kids, can do it with my friends, throw yourself a party, don't wait for <laughs> someone else to do it, and just have some fun. Oh my goodness, we gotta end on that note because it's yeah. absolutely fabulous. <laughs> I can't wait to see what happens for Candace in the future here in the city. I know it's going to be big, fabulous things. You only bring great energy wherever you are, and you make things happen. So, 